Corey, it's the way you say it before the conversation is had. You call them a satanic Demonic leader. Demon. No, but <laughs> if I was Richard, I wouldn't want to talk to you. You called me Alexander the Coppersmith. My man, I don't want to talk. Conversation that took place was that I'm not being what's the word? Uh, I'm I'm showing partiality towards people who are not charismatic, people who are reformed, people who are maybe Baptist, people who are dispensationalists, whoever. In I'm showing partiality towards people who are not Pentecostal charismatic. Now, truth be told, let's just be clear. When I say something about what I'm seeing out there, it's not geared towards Pentecostals or Charismatics. It's just something that would be an affront to the gospel. If it happens to be that they are Pentecostal Charismatic, well, that's not a me issue. That's a them issue. We call it things or people that happen to be uh, more progressive who are not Charismatic. People who are uh, more, maybe let's say even Black Liberation Theology uh, types who aren't Charismatic. People who are more social justice types who are not charismatic. People who are more progressive who are not charismatic. But if, if you are an LGBTQ apologist in the church but not charismatic, well, we call that out. So it's not just towards them, but let's just also be clear. I think there is a difference, but that was one of the things that Pagani had an issue with, and others do, that we spend too much time if we're going to address something, it's always one-sided. And the question is, does he have a does he have a point? Yeah. Okay. So let me let me push back. But you don't do that to Justin Peters. You don't do that to Calvinists out there. You do it to Charismatics, Corey. You okay. stay doing it with Charismatics, but okay, with Justin on. Peters and others, you're gentle. Is that the case? Is that true? Hmm. I should call. I need to call out Justin Peters. I don't know why you pull up Justin Peters' name, but fine. I don't know why you pull up Justin Peters and why others pull up Justin Peters because. Of late, when you talk about this whole issue of cessationism, and then there was a round table with, with Justin Peters and Jim Osmond on one side and Dr. Michael Brown and Sam Storms on the other side, then now Justin Peters' name is at, the, is at the forefront as though he is the face of cessationism. And I don't think he has a problem with that either. So you want me to call out Justin Peters. Should I call out Justin Peters? Me not calling out Justin Peters, does that show partiality? Let's think about that for a second. Maybe I need to call out Justin Peters. Let me think of some reasons why. Okay, You're no, 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 very no, gentle no. with them. Nope. Yes, nope. you are. Yes, you I are. Called out, we... I called out. I called out. And matter of fact, why? And then you Tuesday. delete it. You, you you do a video and then you delete it on them. I'm no, just calling it for what? No, with us, Herod, you go hard. With them, you give them the benefit of the doubt and don't sit here and say we do it because we all see it. That's okay. partiality, my friend. Is he? Does he have a point? Hmm. Now, well, a couple things. One, I do not delete videos again uh, that I've made about them. As a matter of fact, we showed this, I don't know, a few weeks ago where I literally went through some of the videos that are haven't been deleted, but they've just been made private. And when we went through it, we saw a bunch of charismatic videos about what some things that charismatic people have said, and those were deleted. So if anyone that I'm deleting against, uh, deleting for maybe protecting them, helping them out, it would be for charismatics. But to the other point, is that showing partiality by not exposing Justin Peters of the way? And we're just saying Justin Peters. He's not, I don't think, he, I hope he, maybe he's not, I don't know, speaking about just Justin Peters. Maybe he's speaking about other people. Justin Peters is the name. So the Justin Peters of the world, the John MacArthur's of the world. He's going to mention James White, those people. Should we be calling those people out? Am I being partial, showing partiality? Uh, in protecting them and then going after or speaking about charismatics. Hmm. No, but I'm not, not calling you out on that. Okay. But, uh, but here, it is here, what it is. Here, I don't here, see that same smoke. You give it to them. You give it to us all the time. You just, okay. we, we, witch, here, we witch doctors, all of that stuff. Here's but with the them, you real tiptoe. You, that's just what it is, man. That's okay. what it is. But also that is for, partiality. That yeah. is partiality. Whether you second. say hold that on. it is Wait not, it second. is partiality, Corey. I, is the, I can see where he's coming from, but I can't. Because if you're going to say that I need to call out Justin Peters, well, fine. Justin, my friend, let me call you out. Let me publicly rebuke you, Justin Peters, for... 
Okay, wait a minute. Let me see. Hold on. All right, I got it. Justin Peters, I'm calling you out for... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It'll come to me. Just give me a second. Justin Peters, you have... Hmm. Justin, the time that you waved your hand over the crowd uh, and you slayed them in this... No, no. Okay. The time that you said that Genesis 3.15 referred to a woman and not G... No, that wasn't you. You didn't say that about Jesus. Okay, okay. The time that you said that 85% of Jesus' life was out of... No, that wasn't you. Okay, when you said that Adam didn't have a body or that he didn't name the... No, that wasn't you either. Maybe it was... Okay, maybe it was someone else. Maybe it was someone else. May, okay, the... When you said when you when when you said that Christians can have a demon, and when you stated that Christians can can be bogged down with these generational curses that Christians aren't haven't been set f no that wasn't you that said Christians can't be set free. Hmm. Do you see my point? Is there a difference between some of those folks versus the extreme charismatic? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You mean to tell me a doctrinal difference? goes as it is rise at the same level as what this man is doing even charismatics make fun of this charismatic foolishness when you see this stuff so so you can't compare you can't put them on the same level yes we can Corey. How? just the fact of the matter is there is a difference now i'll get back to to this video clip in just a second i'm not out here trying to just one just call out people let that be clear do i call folks out and call things out sure are we told to do so yes again the words, the descriptions, the adjectives, adverbs, nouns, verbs that are used to describe what we're supposed to be doing, refute, rebuke, uh, to expose, to contend, to fight. These are passages that are in the Bible. How do we know? Well, first, I mean, not first, Titus 1, 9, holding fast faithful words which are in accordance with the teaching. This is what we're promoting, teaching, sound teaching so that he will be able to exhort, both exhort in sound doctrine, give sound doctrine, and refute those who contradict sound doctrine. Is Justin Peters, and we're just saying Justin Peters, but so, we'll, and I don't think he has a problem with this, we'll use him as the face of our experiment or what we're talking about. Justin Peters on this side and all the charismatics on that side. Is Justin Peters expounding unsound doctrine? Is it, now, are there some things that you might differ with or disagree? Sure, does that mean he's teaching unsound doctrine? No. We all are going to teach something that somebody has a difference of opinion about. What he's speaking about, remember, Jesus says to beware of false prophets. These people that come in, they look like sheep, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Now, does that speak to their intent or not? We don't know. Does Is the wolf intentionally trying to hurt people uh, or is he not necessarily thinking about it? Well, that, that's not an issue. We don't care about the intent. We, we're, concer we're concerned about the effect. And the effect is to harm the body. And so Paul, not Paul, Peter brings this up in 2 Peter 2, 1. He says, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers. Now, obviously, he's making the making a synonymous between false prophets and false teachers the same, because what do, what do teachers and prophets do? They inform, they tell, they utter, they bring a revelation. That's what they do. And so he says that they will arise among you. And here's what he says, who will secretly kind of smoothly in their own little way, they'll say certain things like we've called out before, some of these real demonic things. We don't see them actually asking for people to sow into the kingdom so they'll get a blessing. We don't see them. We don't see them calling every other thing demonic. Now, if we call someone demonic, that's a problem. But when they cast out a demon, saying someone has a demon, that's not a problem. I don't have a problem with saying that such and such and such and such is demonic or acting acting in demonic fashion. I have no problem with that if that's what they're doing, because we're told to be aware of that. Who will these false teachers who will secretly, that means they're not doing it up front. People aren't catching it. It's done kind of secretly, kind of in a, in a subverted fashion, uh, secretly to introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them bring swift destruction upon themselves. As a matter of fact, let me just type this in real quick because I just, I just, I don't know why I didn't put it up here, but 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, and what his Bible says, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith, pisteos, this is the now, not having faith, but from the faith, the set of beliefs, the tenets of the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. So when we call someone 
demonic for saying certain things, such as a Richard Lorenzo Jr., who, who this conversation was about, who says some things and done some things. Oh, by the way, the charismatics on that very same broadcast at times have called him out and said that what he's saying is wicked, it's evil. Well, so you mean tell me if I see something that's demonic, I shouldn't call it out? Of course I should. You do. Or you, you, you guys would say that you're casting them out, so I can't call it demonic. Why? Because he is charismatic, and that's the problem. It becomes tribal, and we want to kind of back up and protect those that have the same label. Well, no, they're not part of us. Paul says he's making it his mission to undermine those who try to make it in their own little boasted fashion to say they're part of uh, they're part of our team. You're not part of our team. You're not. If you want to keep people bound, you're not part of this. We're not part of the same team. We're not work for the same cause. Jesus has come to set captives free. Now the problem would be would be helpful if the people would actually, since they claim to have the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit, then the Spirit gave us the the, the words of the Lord in print gave us the Bible, well, then the Bible says, sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart and always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks to give an account for the hope that is in you with gentleness and reverence. Meaning, I don't want you to defend yourself. I'm not asking you to defend your lifestyle. I'm not even calling out your lifestyle. Whatever sin you may be involved in, I don't know. But your doctrine, I can tell. Give a defense of that. And oh, by the way, and I'll go back to the video in a second, but to point these things out and to demonstrate that there's a necess that there's a a, a clear uh, distinction, a difference, there's a division, uh, a faction. Paul brings that out in First Corinthians 11, verse 18. He says, "For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist among you. So there are divisions." Notice what Paul's response is. It's not what you would think. Oh, that's a bad thing. We shouldn't do that. No, he says, and in part, I believe it. For there must, and the word that's used here is day, which is necessary. It's necessary, for it's necessary that factions, here's where we get the word heresy, heresies, which is heresies or factions. There, there must, there's necessary for there to be heresies or factions among you. Why? So that those who are approved may become evident among you. In other words, those who actually understand sound doctrine, the one who are approved by God, as Paul says to Timothy, handling the scriptures in an appropriate fashion, a right fashion, not ashamed of that, that they can be seen in juxtaposition comparison to the false teachers. When you see me, my hope, I pray and hope that when you see me and hear my teachings, hear what I'm saying and me going through the scriptures, you can see a clear difference between the folks that I'm calling out. You can see a clear, distinct difference. As a matter of fact, they see the difference. Uh, so, so to Pagani and everyone else, they see, you all see the difference, which is not necessarily stated uh, outwardly, but subconsciously or privately because they don't want to have the conversation because it might get out that, hey, uh, prophet so-and-so, uh, bishop so-and-so doesn't know the word, and we saw that. That's why these folks don't want to have these kind of conversations because they don't know the word and they don't want to be exposed. And so we call out a Benny Hinn, a Creflo Dollar, uh, or, or anyone else, or Richard Lorenzo Jr., or any of these other people. We're not calling out charismatic. I'm not calling out charismatics because I know that charismatics are brothers in the Lord if they place their faith in Christ. Pentecostal charismatic, Baptist, uh, Calvinist, uh, dispensations, whomever. If you place your faith in Christ, you are a brother or sister. Now, are there some points that we can disagree with? Sure. But the message is that salvation comes through by placing your faith in Christ and this is how we live. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people that bring in destructive heresies. And so we call them out. Be just because people aren't doing it, it doesn't mean that it's God's stamp of approval. We just don't do it because we see you as brothers. Or, well, let me take that back. You're not a Calvinist. I take that back. I'm, I'm sorry that I accuse you of that. We don't do it because we still see our reformed brothers as brothers. On the opposite end, it's not the same. So it's all the pointing fingers this way, pointing fingers this way. It's So it's not, it's, it's, I'm, no, Corey, I'm not going to allow you to say that. I'm not going to allow you to say that. I'm not going to yeah. allow you to say that because it's not true. It's All you have to do, anyone that doesn't want to be branded as a heretic, stop preaching heresy. It's really that simple. No one can call you a heretic if you're not preaching heresy. Now, they might, now there are, there's always going to be somebody that's going to put horns on your head and put 666. We're not talking about the children. They're childish folks that do that. But I'm talking about those 
where we're talking about the key essential things of the doctrine and how we live. Most of the Bible is speaking about how we live in the Lord, our faith um, demonstrated in our obedience. That's how, that's the majority of the Bible. And so when someone comes and says something, and so let's say we have a disagreement about people, Christians having a demon. Does that necessarily make the person a false teacher? No. But the problem is when the people who espouse a particular doctrine or belief don't want to have a conversation with anybody. No, that's an issue. I'm not talking about going around other charismatics and say, yeah, we all believe this. It's obvious. And they're not defending it. That's a problem. And you guys tend not to want to do that. And you don't have to. Listen, it's up to you. It's fine if you guys never want to defend your point. But it's also fine if we want to make our point and say these are harmful to the body. Things such as generational curses. I think that is seriously harmful to the body to think that someone can be bound by a generational curse when there's not one passage that tells that there are generational curses post-cross. The Bible tells us from Jeremiah and other passages that that has been eliminated. But I digress because I don't want to be about any particular doctrine. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we are to be on alert and to call out false teachings. And this is not me saying so. This is Paul saying so. Paul, on his deathbed, makes the statement. He says, Paul is the one that says, beware of Alexander. He says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Be on guard or beware of Alexander. Uh, why? For he vigorously opposed our teaching. Now, this is Paul on his deathbed. He could have said, hey, listen, I, it's, it's been wonderful I uh, can't wait to see you guys on the other side. Can't wait to see you in heaven. Uh, love your, love you guys. Love your neighbors. Those things. No, he said, uh, beware of Alexander. Beware of these false teachers. Because what is the whole point of, of 2 Timothy 4, 2, of, of chapter 4? Starting in 4, 2, he says, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. He says, reprove. People don't like that. A lot of charismatics, let's be honest, don't like to be reproved. They don't want to step up to show that they can even reprove someone who differs with them. They certainly don't like to be rebuked. Now, obviously, no one does, but if you want to rebuke me, fine. We're, let's go to the scriptures and let's see. I don't have a problem being wrong. You can't tell me I'm wrong without teaching me that I'm wrong. Show me I'm wrong. Fine. And to do so, exhort with great patience and instruction. Why? For the time will come when a whole lot of Pentecostal charismatics and also non-charismatics will endure, not endure sound doctrine. There's that word again, sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. So what will they do? They'll find people to tell them that Jesus was, was not created as perfect as Adam or that we can be little gods or that, I mean, not, not even just little gods, but we are gods. We have the ability to do exactly what God says, that greater, we can say, we can we can twist John 14 and say that greater works that he does, that he's done that we do now, we'll do also, we'll do more as so we can do better. We'll twist that to say we have the same kind of power. No, you don't, because if you had the same kind of power, you wouldn't be peddling around with us You'd be, because you'd be so far superior in your knowledge and in your practice. And we would see people being delivered once and for all. So uh, we're not what we're talking about and who we're talking about isn't the same. There's no need to call out uh, jo Justin Peters. There's no need to call these people out. And I'm sorry I'm getting passionate, and I'm sorry that I accused you. Listen, you, you can get put passionate you in that same category. category. But the fact is, yeah. so here's what you can do. Name something outright at, at outlandish that a cessationist brother or a dispensational or charismatic. James White is off. He on is what? off. On what? On some craziness, infant uh, damnation, and all of that other stuff. I don't have, and guess what? I'm not going to make a video on it. I'm not going to make a video on it. Well, if you think he's that off, you should, but you don't have to just like, I don't make a video over everything either. But when you talk about James White and this issue of infant damnation, I haven't investigated totally. I have, I have not, but I do know that there are some folks that believe that some infants are determined or predetermined or predestined um, to damnation. What we're talking about is an issue of how God works in salvation. This is because they're trying to construct in their mind how does God save? We know that you place your faith in Christ. And so the question is, what are the mechanisms that are employed? Does he do something first or, did, or do we do something first and then he does something? That's not changing the gospel. We're trying to figure out what would cause this in the first place. And then necessarily implicit in that is what's happening with children. 
who don't get that opportunity to make a positive or even a negative profession of faith. That's what he's talking about. Doesn't change anything in terms of how we function, how we believe the gospel. It's not a different gospel. But but um, casting demons out of someone who's just tired, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, to tell someone that you can be saved and still be bound, well, yeah, that's a huge problem. To tell someone that that a woman is in the place of Jesus, yeah, that's a huge problem. We've got a lot of problems, and the issue is people just don't want to step up and defend themselves because they can't. So the people that you're talking about, the James Whites of the world, he didn't have a problem with talking to you about doctrine. The the Justin Peters of the world doesn't have a problem with sitting down and talking to you about doctrine and going through the scriptures. Doesn't have a problem. He's 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 a seminary educated man. He knows the scriptures. So when you say that I need to rebuke Justin Peters or granted he's the face or someone else, clearly there is a difference. And anyone who thinks differently isn't paying attention. Why? Because we see charismatics themselves going out and publicly rebuking some of these shenanigans saying that this person is off, go go to YouTube, go to Facebook, go to wherever, and just type in false prophets and start watching even non-believers making fun of the Catherine, Catherine Cricks of the world, the David Taylors of the world, making fun of what these folks are saying because to them, now they're not making fun of Justin Peters. They might disagree, but they're not making fun of him. They're not making caricatures of him. And then even in the church, the charismatics are doing it. Pentecostals are even doing it. Mo a lot of these folks have issues with them. And I think about it, a Mike Winger who is, who leans somewhat charismatic, I'm not sure how much, says the same stuff. He's calling out Benny Hinn right now. He's not calling out the Justin Peters of the world. Now he may have a doctrinal dif disagreement. That's that's fine. That's fine. But we're, we're talking about some of these actions, these shenanigans. And you're not, we're not, so we're not talking about the same thing. So I think we need to be clear. Uh, and I think we need to be honest. If you if a person doesn't like being called out, not just by me, but by all the other folks that might say, hey, listen, that's wrong. Well, then don't do those things. It's really that simple. If you have an issue, if someone has an issue with your doctrine and how you understood John 5, 5 or whatever, I don't know. You pick a passage. That's that's different. And that's not to say that, that you are not a brother or you're going to hell. But when we see what we're seeing today which is just what Paul says is going to happen, which is just what Peter says is going to happen, which is just what Jesus says is going to happen, there's clearly a difference. And anyone that can't see that, well, we got a problem. If you think that, that there's something that needs to be called out by someone who is non-charismatic doctrinally, I don't have a problem with that. I've called out I've called out John MacArthur on some things, the issue with uh, the Mark of the Beast issue, whether he's changed his mind on that or the blood uh, that is that is wrong. I've called out even my own former pastor, Tony Evans, uh, who I love dearly. I've called out. I've said, hey, listen, I think that you guys, the voting box of the world, when it comes to this issue with Israel and the church. I had issue with that, Jeff Durbin, so forth. But that's different than what we're talking about. Someone being knocked out or slain in the spirit, those things that you can't even defend with the scriptures and your rationale is that, well, because you because the scripture doesn't say not to do that, then it should be okay. No, that's a problem because the Bible says not to exceed what is written. And what are we doing? What do we see over and over again with a lot of folks in the charismatic? And again, I'm not a care, I'm not a I'm not a cessationist. Now I am a biblical I am a biblical continuationist, which means that I believe how the Holy Spirit moves today, if we see it show up in the hands of a man, it will be it will look just like it looked in the Bible. That's why I say a biblical continuation. So what we see today, prophecies that are vague and unfulfilled or hit and miss, 10% uh, are being, are coming to pass. And th that 10% is very vague. Somebody somewhere in California is going to catch a cold and ultimately die from pneumonia. The Lord showed me that. Really? That's what we're seeing. Or outright false or fake healings. That is false. We don't see that at the hands of the the cessationists. Now, I'm not saying I'm a cessationist either, but we don't see them doing those things. You guys have a problem with them calling you out. You guys have a problem with their doctrine being against your doctrine. And so you want equal treatment, but I won't treat them the same way because they're not doing the same thing. So if you got an issue that they that they promoted doctrinally, I don't have a problem with looking at it and saying, hey, yeah, I agree or disagree. But we can all disagree with some of these other things that you yourself have said as well. These things ought not be so. And so what should we do? What should you be doing? You should be leading the charge. 
You should not get aid and comfort. You guys should not be at some of these conferences that you go to being with some of these folks. It shouldn't be that you have to keep disassociating yourself with certain people. And this is happening all across the charismatic community. Every time you look on something, some social media, somebody in the charismatic commun community is having a falling out with someone else, finding out that this person was after money, this person was deceptive, this person was that. Well, meanwhile, we could have told you that. We could just look back and see, hey, first of all, their doctrine alone tells us what they're teaching, what they're doing tells us I shouldn't be in cahoots with these people. So that's the issue. And if you've got someone that... Hey, they're wrong on that. No problem. A lot of a lot of non-charismatics are bothered right now with what John MacArthur said about mental health. So no, so it's not that people have a problem calling them out. It's just you want it to be the same, but they're not doing the same. So I think we should pump the brakes on wanting Justin Peters to be treated like the rest of the charismatics because Justin Peters isn't doing what the rest of the charismatics are doing. Amen. Hey,